This video is sponsored by Clip Studio Paint. So in this video, I wanted to show you all how I work on my art and create content for YouTube and Twitch. So starting off with just like the physical general stuff, I actually have an interesting scenario here. I have a kitchen table as my desk and this is from Rove Concepts. And I found that this desk was perfect and I really wanted the white top just because of the aesthetic that I like. I thought I would do a lot of top down videos here but I ended up just having my Cintiq on top. The next most important thing, probably one of the most important things, is my chair. Now this is a recent new addition to my setup. This is the new Logitech collab with Herman Miller for their Embody line. It's very expensive, but I am very happy with the purchase and I am looking forward to the next probably decade or more of using this chair. And on the floor to my left, you can see I have my blue Dyson fan here and the blue is nice and contrasty to my, you know, pink red aesthetic and it matched the chair. So, hey, also on top of my desk, I've got some speakers. They're just some Kanto speakers that I really enjoy. Now, another recent thing I've done is I've modded this desk um, or table to have some more uh, wood that I screwed into the bottom so that I could attach this wooden keyboard. Well, it's not wooden, but it's a keyboard holder that I just got from Amazon and I use it to hold my keyboard, mouse, and my Razer Tartarus that I'll talk about in a little bit. It's really, really great because in combination with my new chair, I can sink down low enough to where I can easily pull my keyboard out, use it, and then I can adjust my armrests to where it's perfectly supporting my arm as I work and I can just slide everything under when I'm done and I have a ton of space left in the background compared to before when everything was just butting up against the edge of the desk and I would keep hitting everything and it was just a huge mess. Now I just want to go right into my computer on the right side. So this is my new Define 7 computer case. Inside I've got a Intel 9900K a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, and then I've got 64 gigs of RAM, along with a couple M.2 SSDs. Now, as I go to the back of my PC, you see the cable management here, as well as for the whole desk, is pretty interesting. I do have some cable management going on here, but as you can see, it's it's really <laughs> it looks pretty bad. I've just got these clips here holding everything up, and I had to do this because. I found that I just changed so much every few weeks, um, especially when it comes to just filming different scenarios, that I needed something that was secure to keep the cables off the ground, at least so I could have some sanity, but also allow me to move things around as freely as I need to. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the stuff that I use to actually make content for YouTube or Twitch. The first thing is gonna be my camera, as you can see there right next to my monitor. I have a Panasonic GH5S, which I use for just my typical face cam for Twitch. For filming everything else, I really just bounce between my a7 III and my Sony a6400. Now it's great to have these cameras and to record footage to them specifically, you know, just inside the camera with a SD card. But for a lot of the content that I do, it's really better to have it go straight into the computer. And so the only way to do that, the best way to do that at least, I found is to use an Elgato Cam Link. So these little USB plug-in devices you can see here on the back of my computer, you just connect a mini HD or micro HDMI cable that ends up in a full-size HDMI cable, plug that into this Cam Link, and then plug that into your PC. And then now your applications can see your camera pretty much as a webcam. As for audio, you guys know I take that pretty seriously on this channel, and my microphone up there is the MKH416. It's very expensive, but it's just perfect. I wish I had known about it earlier and not purchased probably the same amount in other microphones. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just great, and it allows me to keep it far away, keep it out of the footage, and still have a pretty decent sound. So in order to have the audio processed and go to my computer properly, since this is a real XLR microphone and not a USB one, which is, you know, perfectly fine as well, you could just use a Blue Yeti, I have this thing here, which is an audio interface, and it's called the Mix Pre 6, and it allows me to use it to listen to audio from my computer, but also pipes the audio directly into uh, Streamlabs, which is what I use for streaming and some YouTube stuff that I'll get into later when we talk about the software. On the bottom right hand side of my desk, you can see I have some headphone holders along with my Sennheiser HD 660S. 
So for lighting, I have a few light sources here. The main one is going to be my windows, right? I am super happy to have a lot of windows in this space and it provides the best quality of light. However, that's usually not enough. So I have a big light source, a four foot uh, dome here above me, and that allows me to get a lot of soft light. Otherwise, I have two Elgato key lights, which I just kept around since they're what I started with. Um, and I found that they help give me a little bit of fill and hair light to make me kind of stand out from my background. And you can see on the floor here, I have a strip light here that is really helpful for just random things and giving it a cool kind of cyberpunky futuristic vibe in my place whenever I feel like it. Now holding up my big light over there is a C stand and that's also what's holding the microphone. Now let's actually get into digital painting. The star of the show here is going to be my Wacom Cintiq. This Cintiq is part of the Wacom Cintiq Pro line and it's amazing. Um, I use it for a lot of my artwork. Uh, I do find myself lately, especially with my Pink Stober stuff, doing some sketches on my iPad and then bringing it back here because it's easier for me to get into, you know, some gestures with a screen this size. Now, the interesting way I have it set up here is uh, something that I learned from Borodante, where I'm actually using it as an Intuos tablet, where I'm not looking at the screen when I draw on it. I'm actually drawing on it and then looking at my 32 inch monitor directly above it. And what I, on my Cintiq, what I tape to it is my stream deck. That's what I use to switch through different scenes in uh, Twitch when I'm streaming. Um, you can also use it to just launch different programs and do all kinds of random stuff on your computer. Now, in order to have this kind of more aesthetic format, I have a stand behind my monitor, which is another source of a lot of cable mess, but I have it set up to where it perfectly fits and clamps onto the center of my desk or, you know, my kitchen table. And it holds my monitor out quite a far distance so that I don't have to strain my eyes to see what I'm working on. Now, some other little things would just be my glove here. This helps my hand move and glide across the screen and also helps keep it clean. And then I also have my iPad on my desk along with the, you know, the magic keyboard here. Sometimes I have my stand here. And then finally, we have my Razer Tartarus Pro. So with this, I'll get into more when we talk about software in a second, but I use this for all of my keyboard shortcuts when I'm painting. So now I want to get into the software that I actually have on my computer for digital art. And I really don't use too many different things. I mostly just use Clip Studio Paint and Photoshop. The other piece of software that I highly recommend is PureRef. And so this is a program that's free, so I recommend everyone gets it and it allows you to just drag and drop images from your, you know, file system or from anywhere on your browser and you can keep those references and just move them around, scale them. It's really changed my entire workflow. I always have Clip Studio and Photoshop opened now, you know, less than a full size window so that I can have a permanent spot available for pure ref. The super cool thing as well is that you can save any kind of image board that you create with it and then you can just open it up and then go back to using it. Now, this isn't really software, but some websites that I highly recommend that you check out is going to be Pinterest. Pinterest is where I find pretty much all of my inspiration. Um, I've just, as you scroll through it, as you start to save boards and collect, you know, images, Pinterest will kind of get an idea for what you like. So I have all kinds of art that I have selected or saved or pinned. And then I have different images and references of all kinds of things, different clothing genres, different color palettes, like images that I want to use for color studies, uh, cinematic shots that I've seen people collect. And then I find my own that I like that I want to, you know, emulate. And then I mentioned Instagram because what you'll find is that a lot of the images on Pinterest are just taken from Instagram. Now, in addition to Photoshop, I actually have the entire Adobe suite on my computer. And this is because, you know, if you want to just get Photoshop and Lightroom, you could pay a lot cheaper for that. But I need a few of the other software that they have. So I have to get the whole thing. Um, I use Premiere Pro for editing all of my videos. I also use After Effects a tiny bit. And then I also use Audition a lot because I need that to process my audio before I bring it into Premiere Pro. And then I use Illustrator as well. I use that a lot back in architecture school uh, to process all my drawings. And I use it for some of my logos and graphics as well um, for what I do now. Now, I want to focus a little bit more on Clip Studio Paint because that's the program that I have of choice for painting. What I use with my Razor Tartarus here is a ton of different shortcuts. So I'm just going to tell you some of them that I have. And so I use the pencil tool, the brush tool, lasso, blend, 
eraser and the airbrush all connected in a straight line. Um, some of them have to be a little bit outside. And then I have some general shortcuts as well, such as control, alt, shift, undo, redo, copy and paste, and then save and delete all to their own button. So that's super efficient. I never have to worry about losing a document because I can just hit save with the tap of my thumb hitting the 20 button right here and it's perfect. Now, the really cool thing about this Tartarus is that it has a joystick here and these, you know, directional buttons, and I've mapped the left and right to rotate my canvas whenever I need to, so I don't have to worry about the... I'm just going to tell you right now, on this Wacom Cintiq, the touchscreen is terrible. I just try not to use it unless I'm using it like a, you know, Windows tablet. Um, but I also have the up and down button, directional buttons, mapped to increasing the brush size. So it's super efficient to just move around on the canvas and it feels, you know, almost as fast as using my iPad. I also have zoom um, set to the scroll wheel here. And then when I click the scroll wheel in, it zooms out fully so I can see my entire artwork at once. Now some tips for working in Clip Studio Paint is that you can find a window called the sub view in the navigator and I love using the navigator to keep an eye on how my whole entire piece is working. Sometimes I'll just look at the entire navigator when I'm zoomed in to see how it looks and that has helped me make a lot of great decisions on my painting. What the sub view does is like a little bit of a help sometimes. I don't use it as much because I have pure ref but it allows you to have a reference in your actual program there but that's not actually in the canvas and the cool thing about this that you can't do with pure ref is that you can color pick from it another cool thing i really recommend you guys check out is the color history there are a ton of colors in this color history uh, window here and that's super super helpful another tip is something that you can do you know in most programs but i find it really helpful here is coloring your layers so what i'll do is when i have a specific workflow is i'll have maybe a lighting and then shadows and then my flats and then my line art and then i'll color those all specific colors so that i can easily find them because sometimes you know with a 4k screen it can be difficult to read the names of the layers themselves and it just takes more time and gives you more strain on your brain when you want to just focus on painting now the last thing i really recommend you guys check out is the unsharp mask tool here it allows you to sharpen everything up and this is something you should do when you finish your paintings all the time especially if you want to post it online it really tends to make your artwork look much better when you post it to things like instagram where they tend to compress a lot of it and some of the edges can be lost and of course if you all have any other software that you use that i haven't shown here i highly recommend you let us know in the comments so that we can grow and improve and of course check out clip studio paint it has just been an amazing piece of software that i use to make almost everything i do um especially all of my uh well not all but a lot of my more detailed inktober pink pinktober stuff and uh yeah that'll be it for now um stay tuned i'll see you all in the next video it's gonna be pretty special I'll be doing something I've never done before in my entire life. So make sure you stay tuned for that. <laughs> All right. Peace. Have a great day and stay safe.